The day came, and they were all in one place. In one place. In, in one, one place. place. Being together. Being in one space. Breathing the same air. Saying, saying the, the same, same words. words. Had seemed like the most important thing. The most important thing. Then there was a sound. Like a rush of wind. Then there was a sound. The sound of things changing. Then there was a sound. Suddenly nothing was the same. Those who were gathered received new languages. Those who were gathered received new dialects. Those who were gathered received new understanding. Those who were gathered received new power. Those who were gathered received the Holy Spirit in a new way. It became clear immediately that what was important had changed. Immediately, it was clear that what was important had changed. What was important had changed. Immediately. That was clear. Being in one space was not a priority. Speaking, Speaking in unison, unison was, was not a, a priority. priority. Being all together to breathe the same air was not a priority. The power of the Holy Spirit rearranged their priorities to align them with God's. God's priority of diversity. God's priority of widespread grace. God's priority of neighbors and community. God's priority of stepping out. Reaching out. Being out in the world. The world that God loves. The world that is God's priority. Being, Being aligned, aligned with, with God's, God's priorities, priorities, it felt, it feels, like, like being on fire. Our story this morning is this Pentecost story from Acts 2, 1 through 21. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites. As well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of the new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what the spoken through the prophet Joel in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions and your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above 
and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Waiting. That's what the disciples were doing that day, the day of Pentecost. Waiting. Jesus had told them to go to this place and to wait there. And so they were gathered in that room, that room where they had shared a meal together, the last meal they shared with Jesus. And they were praying. And in that room where they were waiting and praying, the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came in a rush of wind and fire. Individual flames were seen to be dancing from head to head to head, waiting. The disciples were in that room waiting. Not knowing what was next, not knowing that this amazing event was going to happen where each of them, all together, were going to be touched by the Spirit at the same time. They were waiting. We're in that same spot right now, waiting. Waiting for the world to go back to normal waiting to be allowed to go out like we used to, waiting to be able to come back here to church, waiting, waiting to hug our grandkids tight, waiting to see our sons and daughters that live far away, waiting to have a cup of coffee with our friends, We're waiting. But when the disciples are in that room waiting and praying, they receive that unexpected gift of the Spirit descending on them. The Spirit coming to them in the form of wind and fire. The Spirit alighting on them and dancing between them and changing them. And each of us can think about the power of wind and fire. We've seen an example. This year we watched as Australia burned and burned and burned. How the wind would take the fire and make it leap from space to space, from tree to tree, from town to town. We would watch as animals and people fled in the wake of the fire and the wind that brought it terribly destructive. And just in the last two weeks, we've again watched the power of the wind. This time the wind was pushing water, and that water turned into Cyclone Amphen. The most powerful and super cyclone to hit the Bay of Bengal This cyclone that came impacted an area of forest called the Sudab Sudaban. Sudaban. It's Bengali for beautiful forest, and the people who live in that area have experienced cyclones and typhoons before. But this one was particularly hard on this delta region where the rivers come together. And this beautiful forest, the Bengali name for the Sudaban, 
is reaching one of its limits. One of the impacts from global climate change is that this super cyclone may be destroying one of the areas that is as important to the people who live there and is important to the welfare of the earth as the Congo Basin, as the other rainforests around the world. And we watch the wind take that water and whip through there destroying houses and displacing people. We're in that place of the disciples in the waiting spot, in the place where we don't know what comes next. The future is uncertain. But into that spot, the story of Pentecost tells us to wait and to pray. To gather, although we can't gather in person, to gather together in prayer. So to gather together in prayer. And into that moment of waiting, the Spirit will come. And it will come in the form of fire and wind. And that fire and that wind This year, I've been struck with that image of fire and wind, partly because we are looking at a world where we have stopped, we've all stopped, and we're watching as people are being rushed out back into the world. But many of us are still waiting waiting to experience and feel what's next, waiting to go forth. And while that fire and wind can be very destructive, it makes us want to think about what it is it that we need to have the fire burn down. Have the wind of the Holy Spirit sweep through and transform and change? Where do we need the fire to come into this world we inhabit and change things? And I don't know about you, but when I think about where I need the power of the Spirit right now, I think about those children at the border those children who speak a different language from us. And according to this text, if we just listen and use the Holy Spirit, we will be able to understand each other and speak to each other and know each other. Those children at the border who are being separated from their parents again, who are being sent back to their countries, without any knowledge of whether they have this horrible virus. And I think of needing the fire and the wind to sweep through all those immigration camps, detention facilities, to show us what it means to treat people as if they are truly one of us. And I think about our black Americans. It has been a horrible month. But the thing is, this horrible month is part of the history and continued history of racism in the United States. This horrible month may have opened our eyes, but that racism has been present for hundreds of years in this country. 
And so when we think about the Holy Spirit coming with the wind, or at the end of John's Gospel, it says Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into the disciples. His very breath came out of him and went into them. That Jesus gave them new life and gave them the Spirit with his breath. And all I can hear is that man with the police officer kneeling on his neck saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Those two images. The breath of the Spirit being blown into the disciples. And the breath of that man being shut off, cut off, being stopped. We need that Holy Spirit fire and wind to blow through our nation and make us change these destructive, white supremacist, racist attitudes that keep leading to the death of black Americans. Because there have been many images in the last few weeks. There was the image I watched yesterday of a young man who had, was speeding. And the officers want to pull him over, so he makes sure to go to a spot where he knows that there will be people around. And he lies down on the ground screaming, I'm scared, don't hurt me, as two sets of SUVs full of police arrive with their guns pulled. And that young man, that young man, scared for his life, is being told to get up. And he's saying, I can't get up until you put your guns down. I'm afraid you're going to kill me. And then you see his 90-year-old grandmother come out to get between him and the police officers. And they push her. They hurt her. This 90-year-old grandma who just wants to save her her grandson from being shot. And we see the pictures from Minnesota where people are so angry that they are out in the streets looting and protesting and saying, stop, enough. Aren't I human? Aren't I the same as you. What does it matter what color my skin is? And they, unarmed, are being met with tear gas and rubber bullets. And yet we just saw a whole bunch of white people march into state capitals carrying firearms with no tear gas and no bullets. And so I want the Holy Spirit to rush in. I want that spirit fire to dance on us and transform us and help to cleanse the sin of our nation. I want that Holy Spirit fire. But the other part of this story is that that fire, that spirit, that wind and breath invites people to enter the world differently, to hear and see each other differently. It invites the disciples to begin to experience what it means to be in the place of another they're able to share the stories, the powerful stories they have of Jesus, and speak to everyone they encounter in the language they need to hear to be able to hear that story. 
And it changes the people also because they're wondering how can this foreigner that I should not be able to understand be able to speak to me? Because God opened their ears too. The Spirit rushed through them and made it so that they could hear what the disciples had to say. And what Peter has to say to us is that we're invited into this process of dreaming and prophesying and visioning. That the young and the old and the in-between, that male and female, Jew and Greek, servant and free, everyone is invited into this process of the Spirit descending and giving them the power to dream dreams, to prophesy, and to envision. And that Spirit is already showing us what a world looks like. A world where the fire can come through and cleanse and save us, as it says in the very last line. A fire that comes through and shows us how we can dream the dream of God. That we can show the dream of God. We can live that dream where we are, where we've been planted. And right now, as we are in that spot where we have to wait, the perfect time to pray and dream. That's the perfect opportunity to stop and dream. Dream the dream of God. What dream has God placed on your heart? What dream has God showed you for what we as the church here in Hinckley can be? Has showed you about how we can talk to our neighbors because even though it seems like we may not be able to speak the same language, even though it seems like they might not want to hear, if the Spirit is present in us and we speak about the love of God, we speak about the power of that love and the ways that love can transform and change the world, if we speak of God's dream of a world where everyone Everyone is welcome. Everyone is a child of the beloved, is a child of God, is blessed and beautiful and created in God's image. And every child is given a dream of God, is given a dream of how they can live out love in the world. And our job is to help them make that love dream come true. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come, with the wind blowing through us. Come with the cleansing fire. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and move through me as I struggle today. When I see that beautiful little black boy riding his bicycle past my house, knowing if he goes three blocks up, he will pass the house with the Confederate flag waving. Be with that little boy and his family. Protect them and keep them safe. Holy One, we need your cleansing spirit present with us. There is so much that needs your fire to rip through it and clean it out. 
We need your fire to burn where people don't have the health care they need. Where people are hungry and can't get enough food. Where jobs have been lost by the millions. Where racism is persistent. Where people are killed for the color of their skin. Renew us and show us your dream. Spirit, blow through us with your vision and prophecy. Help us to see the world you imagine. Help us to create communities of love and compassion. Help us to see everyone as a beloved child of God. Holy Spirit, blow into our lives where we are hurting. We pray for those who have died this week. We pray for those close to us who have lost a loved one, the Abel, the Miller, and the Winterbogger families. And we pray for all those, the 100,000, that have died by COVID-19. Please surround their grieving families with your love. As we stop to pray this day for those who are ill, those who are disheartened, those who are lonely. Come, Holy Spirit, come. As we pray together the prayer that you taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My special mission offering goes to support DeKalb County Community Gardens this month. They have served over 6,500 residents since March 21st. The Growmobile has had up to 10 pop-up pantry events in 43 days, serving over almost 4,000 residents, 75% of whom are new to the food pantry. They, the community garden has distributed over th almost 39,000 pounds of food in just 31 days. If you'd like to support this mission, please make a note on your check or when you donate at our PayPal site, you can find the information on our website at stpaulsinkley.org. Let us pray. God, send your spirit that we might see the needs of others. God, send your spirit that we might share your abundance with the hungry. God, send your spirit that we might truly love as you have loved us. Teach us, God, to bless others as you have so richly blessed us. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember, God loves you and always will. Remember that Jesus loves you and always will. Remember that I love you and always will. May you act on that love and dream dreams and see visions and prophesy the love of God to the world. Amen. Thank you.